With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Superbooth Home Edition. Uh, this time we're jumping across to just Bristol, which is down the road from us, where we're talking to Finley Shakespeare from Future Sound Systems. How are you doing, Finn? Hello. Uh, I'm good, Nick. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just enjoying the sunshine through the window, uh, trying to stay busy. Um, all the kind of typical things that I'm sure everyone else is kind of going through at the minute but yeah keeping busy and, and keeping entertained the two main things i think absolutely so uh we're because of network constraints we're just shooting this sort of little intro uh and then finley will show us uh, what's going on with future sound systems um so that'll be tagged on to the end of this so finn what what are you going to be uh, showing us today oh i'm just going to demo the new recombination engine module that we've got uh, out this kind of premiered slightly last year at Superbooth. um I guess we had a prototype there, but uh, we actually gave the module a full launch a couple of weeks back. Um, and it's it's been doing pretty well so far. Um, it's kind of a new, unique look at how to generate waveforms using uh, three oscillators um, and how you can do funky things with kind of cutting between positive portions of a wave and negative portions and all the different operations that you can do therein. So, yeah. It's kind of funky. <laughs> Excellent. And so um, that is good. You are sh are you shipping that one yet, or is there uh, more stuff to? Yeah, that's been out uh, for I think about two weeks now, oh, okay. maybe a week and a half. Um, so yeah, it's slowly finding its way to dealers. I, I think um, shipping things is a little yeah. bit slower than expected. So we're sending things out, and and things are in the post. But yeah, it's all it's all uh, out in the world now. And, and what's the cost of that, just out of interest, uh, just so people got a reference when they've watched the demo part? So it's £559, including VAT. Um, yep. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to translate to in euros and US dollars, but kind of in that ballpark. Uh, we've tried to keep the price around, you know, I guess kind of competing triple oscillator uh, formats, but we do think that this maybe does things that other modules can't. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Finley. Um, we'll look forward to the, the demo, which will follow now. Um, but hopefully we'll see you in person at the next available show. Yes, fingers crossed. Uh, we're definitely missing everyone this year. So, yeah, it's a shame. OK, take it away. So what you can see here is the new Future Sound Systems recombination engine. Uh, this is catalog number OSC2. Uh, so this is the second oscillator module that we've put out now. Um, and this is kind of going after more of a complex oscillator vibe. So we have these three oscillators here. This one on the far left is the scissor oscillator. And then we have these two here, which is the positive DNA and the negative DNA. Um, the whole kind of theory behind the recombination engine is that you have um, this positive DNA oscillator uh, generating all of the kind of like, um, I guess, voltage that is uh, positive going of the waveform. And then this negative DNA will generate all the negative going voltage uh, per cycle. So uh, you can see here, I've got the positive sawtooth up and then the negative kind of rectified sign up at 12 o'clock. And here on these VCA levels, that means that it's being kind of spliced by the... Um, square wave of the scissor. So if I bring the glue VCA up, you'll see on the scope that what we've got is uh, two peaks of that saw wave and then three troughs of that sign. If I change the frequencies here, I can change the wave shape. can hear the kind of differences there. So I can bring in different waveforms per negative and positive. So this is all doable through the sync and CV locking uh, that are found in the scissor section of the OSC2. We've also got the pulse width skew on, uh, which means that if I turn the VCA back up, is when I change the pulse width, bearing in mind that pink trace is the scissor square wave, you can see that the positive and negative DNAs 
uh, have their frequency shifted in accordance to what the pulse width is doing. So kind of as you're condensing, say, this part of the waveform in the square wave, the frequency of that section goes up and the frequency of this negative section is decreased. So you get this kind of really strange, almost formanty kind of effect. So already we're getting some quite interesting sounds out of this. What I'm going to do is I've got this um, key step hooked up here uh, with just a single envelope controlling the glue VCA. And I'm just going to um, get a little arpeggio going. Uh, if I put key hold on. And we'll just explore some of the sounds that you can get from this. So here I've got the envelope controlling the pulse width as well as the glue VCA which is kind of tying the positive and negative DNA oscillators together. I've also got frequency modulation of the negative DNA oscillator coming from the raw output of the positive rectified sign. I've got the velocity information coming from the key step going into the frequency CV of the positive as well, so we can just kind of get some accents on this arpeggiator. What happens if I bring the VCA level of each waveform past 12 o'clock is that it kind of uh, just goes through the VCA at full scale. It's no longer modulated by that scissor square wave. So now we're listening to the uh, positive rectified sign without being modulated by that square wave, but it is also still being synced to that positive edge of the square wave from the scissor. VCA also has a mix input, which is really handy for taking um, kind of like the fundamental frequency essentially from the scissor oscillator when you're using it in this mode. So here I'm using the triangle output and I've got that rooted into the mix input on the glue VCA. We can also do really interesting things with AM using all of the VCA control inputs. So here I'll take the, um, let's take the positive triangle into the VCA of the negative saw. And what's really interesting using the recombination engine for different uh, FM and AM patches 
is that if you've got this sync lock to the scissor oscillator, everything's being essentially phase locked in. So you don't start having these kind of like runaway modulation patches. Everything stays relatively stable and tonal. We could do the same thing, maybe take the negative triangle output into the positive triangle VCA. And then bring some of the envelope back in on the pulse width, skewing the frequencies of the positive and negative. So that was just a quick run through of the kinds of timbres you can get from the recombination engine. And it's, it's worth saying that all I'm using there is just the recombination engine and an envelope. I've got a little bit of reverb and delay coming from Ableton as well. Um, but it really is a, a very interesting sound source that can pretty much be used as a synth voice on its own, uh, as long as you've got a little bit of modulation coming from somewhere. Um, and it's really, really interesting as well, just throwing a load of kind of LFOs at this into the VCA CV inputs, into the frequency CVs once everything is sync locked. Uh, it's a really, really kind of um, versatile and deep module. And we're really, really, really happy to get it finally out into the open. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. We're uh, upset that we can't be with you at Superbooth, but uh, we look forward to seeing you next year. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay entertained. Thank you very much. <laughs>